Hey guys, GhostXP here. I want to do a tutorial on how to route contact in FL Studio to different mixer channels and also to different MIDI outs. Now there are other videos that do this, but I find some of them skip over certain things that might be confusing to new users that might not know how contact works. So I just wanted to go over those as well. Also, I told a friend that I would do this since he's getting complete. So without further ado, I'll also be adding timestamps in the description. So if you go to the description and you want to skip over to a certain section of the video or refer to a certain section again, you can do that. Now, first thing I want to talk about is why you actually would want to do this. And there's actually a few very good reasons, one of them being efficiency. It's actually not very efficient to load up a new instance of contact whenever you want to load up a new instrument because there's a lot of background processing going in on contact. So actually having a master master uh, channel for contact that you can route up to different MIDI outs is more efficient. It also helps a lot with workflow. If you, if you route everything to a MIDI out, it actually gives you access to all these panels that you can customize for each instrument, such as mod wheel or foot controller expression. These are all controls that I use very often and I actually create a template file for for this. So whenever I need to start a project, I can slow that up and I have quick access to all these MIDI outs and it's, everything's already routed to where I want it to. And also I save defaults for contacts. So whenever I load a new instance of contact, it'll also load the exact amount of outputs that I need every time I need to do a new project. So we're just going to start from a blank canvas here. Now when you go to load up the plugin, you should see three options here. Contact 5, Contact 5, 16 out, and Contact 5, 8 out. Now this just tells you the maximum amount of channels you can route outwards. Now the one, Contact 5, the default one, this is actually the 64 out. So if you want to load 64 channels, you'd load the default one. But just for the purpose of this tutorial, we're only going to do 16 out. It's also worth mentioning that 16 out, that's 16 mono channels, and most uh, instruments are stereo, so 16 mono channels is actually 8 st stereo channels. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the output button here, and you should get this panel right here. It might look a little different for you, but we're going to fix that, it doesn't matter. First thing we're going to do is click on add channels, and this panel will come up, and we're going to move this up to 8 to max out the channels. And for SoundCloud host output, we're going to click on that and click on the very top one, which should be KTSD1. And make sure ascending output assignment is checked. And also delete existing channels before creating new ones. We're going to also make sure that one's checked. Now really, this is just a preference thing. This will, what this does is it will replace this ST1 right here. Now if you wanted to, we can de-check that. We can add eight, seven channels. And we can start from the second and that'll do the exact same thing, but just for simplicity's sake, we're just going to start from the top and we'll replace that. And now we're going to hit OK. Now this will give you all eight channels. Now if you did properly, these should be manually or automatically routed for you. Now if it isn't, you might have to do it manually and that's kind of a pain in the ass to do. So just to recap, when you go to add channels, make sure you start from ST1 Make sure sending output assignment is checked when you go to click OK. All right, next we have these aux1 uh, sends. These pretty much just act as send channels. I actually don't use these. Maybe you, maybe you use them, but I don't. So if, in case you do use these, you might need to leave room for them. So instead, so there's four aux channels. So instead of adding uh, eight channels, you might actually need to add four, but. I don't use these aux uh, sends, so I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect those. Now if you get this menu, this means that the, the changes won't take effect until you restart contact. So if, for example, you load up an instrument and you want to route something and there's, you only see the ST1, you don't see anything else, that just means you have to restart contact before those uh, send channels will actually uh, show up. So I went ahead and disconnect the rest of the aux channels that I don't plan on using. Now the next thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to click on the outputs, this, uh, this button here. Go to Save Current Output section as default state for, and we're going to click on the 60 now because that's the one we're using. I wouldn't recommend doing all formats. I would recommend just uh, doing this for each uh, 
uh, version of contact that you plan on using. Since we're using the 16 out, we're going to click on uh, 16 out, and that makes sure that whenever we load a new instance of uh, uh, contact 5 16 out, it'll look exactly like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to delete contact, add it back in. And if you did it properly, this uh, should look exactly the same way as you close it. Another thing worth mentioning is if you go to click on the channels here, uh, what you might see is a bunch of unassigned channels and some aux channels. Now the th thing to remember here is that these are actually redundant. It doesn't really matter what these are called. Contact automatically names these whenever you open contact. So if you're doing this and this looks different to you, it doesn't matter. Uh, contact automatically names them whenever you open it. All right, so let's go ahead and add our MIDI out channel. Find here, MIDI out. Next, we're gonna click on this cog wheel here. And we're gonna make sure the input port is one or whatever you pre prefer, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that the input port one here has to match the port here. So we're gonna change that to one as well. And say if we load up an instrument, say cello ensemble. If we click on the MIDI out, we see it's actually connected to that. If say we load up another one, cello cello here, click on MIDI out, nothing still plays the first instrument. We're just going to clone that and change this to channel two so that the second MIDI out should play that cello solo. Now you'll notice here that everything's still loaded to the master. That's because contact itself is still, uh, it's not routed yet, so we're going to change that to one. Click back on the cogwheel heel, go to processing. Now this is where you can load out all the, the uh, contact outputs to separate mixer channels in FL Studio. We're just gonna hit auto map outputs. Now this will automatically route everything relative to what contact's currently routed to. So let's say we got our first MIDI out here. We can see that's uh, routed to insert one. MIDI out two, second channel. Well, that's still routed to MIDI one. We'll change that here. It does, contact doesn't automatically change the, the output here. You have to do that manually. It changes the MIDI out automatically. It doesn't change output. I don't know why, but that's just something to keep note of. So we, we can see that our second channel is routed properly to the second insert. So next thing I want to talk about is how to use this MIDI out panel. Now this is actually a really useful tool for increasing your workflow. You can configure any of these knobs to do anything within contact. You can route to anything you want. First thing I'm going to do is kind of create a template that I'm going to use for all the other MIDI out and I'm going to do that by configuring well first you have to right click on this configure I'm going to configure all the typical CC's that I pretty much use with every instrument first one's going to be the mod wheel so I'm just going to call this mod and the mod wheel is almost always going to be CC1 hit accept go next one this one's going to be expression that one's always 11 Next one, configure foot for the foot controller. Whoops. Now foot controller is almost always going to be 64. And those are the three ones I pretty much use with everything. And we can test this by right clicking on this, link to controller, just move my mod wheel. Yep, that works. And all, the awesome thing about this is I can very easily just reconfigure my mod wheel so I can click link to controller make sure remove conflicts is checked unless you want to control multiple CCs at once move my mod wheel it'll automatically link that now the foot controller for the Rickenbacker happens to be slide so if I has to make sure it's on the same string so that's working all right so we're just going to close that and then we are going to clone this. Well, actually, first, let's change the color. It makes it easier to see and differ, um, just makes it easier. Clone, change that to channel two, change the color. Clone, channel three, change the color. I'm going to speed this part up. All right, so we got that done. And we're gonna do the same thing for the mixer channels. All 
All right, so now we got that done. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hold Control Shift S to save as. And we're just going to save this in our templates folder. We'll just call it whatever you want. <laughs> Contact tutorial. OK. We just go to new from templates. Choose the template you just created. And we can see everything's working properly. You have all the channels colorized, all the MIDI outs, all the outputs for contact set up properly, which is going to save you a lot of time. <laughs> now, if you didn't do it this way, like if you wanted to access a, a control for contact, you'd have to go to browse parameters and scroll down and you'd have to find whatever parameter you wanted to change, like say the mod wheel. Link to controller. Now we have a mod wheel setup. That's actually kind of a pain in the ass to do every time. So being able to just click on this and use this, it's a lot faster and easier. Also, this another thing to mount, mention about this parameters is if you wanted to route something that maybe isn't uh, obvious, like I, I would recommend looking at the the documentation that comes with whatever instrument. So if I would recommend looking at the Rickenbacker documentation to figure out what CCs are actually used so that you know what to route in this. But if there is a CC that isn't routed automatically or doesn't come routed, like say you wanted to change the, the preamp here, we just got to find an empty CC. So say CC20 that looks empty, go to MIDI out, change this to preamp. Change this control to 20. Hit accept. So now we right click on preamp, learn CC automation, go back to our MIDI out and just move the preamp. Now, as you can see, the preamp's currently routed to MIDI out channel CC, no, currently routed to CC20. And we can link that to our mod wheel as well. We can also uh, pretty much change any of these or route any of these to whatever you want and create an automation clip. So I just right, right clicked on it, create an automation clip for the preamp, which could be useful, I guess. To unroute pre this preamp control, you just right click on it, remove CC automation from 20. And now it, it's independent of this control. So one more thing I should probably mention, even if you wanted to load 32 channels or 64 channels into one contact instance, the MIDI out plugin in FL Studio only goes up to 16, so if you wanted to take advantage of more uh, outputs from contact, you'd actually have to load up multiple contact instances. And you might be thinking, like, why would I need 32 or more contact patches? Well, I actually do use uh, all 32 channels, sometimes more when I'm working with uh, full orchestrated pieces. And once I discovered and did this, like, you just save the template, forget it, and load it up whenever you want to start using contact instruments, it actually, it really helps with your workflow because I can just quickly load up whatever instrument I want, find a CC that I want to control, link that, or if I wanted to, just remove the remove this option here, link it to my mod wheel. And I can actually link multiple controls to a single mod wheel. Now, I find it's useful sometimes if I want to say control an entire string section. So yeah, I hope you guys found this helpful. Thanks for watching.